What's up guys, Dar Sizzle here, down here in the beautiful Florida Keys, and in today's video, we go fishing offshore, and we end up catching these beautiful snapper, mutton snapper, and a mangrove snapper, and we are gonna show you how to catch them, I'm gonna show you how to clean them on the filet table, and then we're gonna go in the house, and we are gonna cook a delicious fish sauce to eat with this fish. In my opinion, it's the best way to eat fish, period, and also my favorite recipe ever. Alright guys, we are at the spot, getting ready to send down a live pinfish, big old pinfish, and we are fishing on the full moon at one of our favorite spots. We're going to see if we can catch some lunkers, maybe my favorite, mutton snapper. We're just going to have to see what happens, so he's going out. Here we go. Just sent the bait back out. Honestly, been had struggling out here at this spot for a couple hours now, but I sent a bait out, had a couple rigs broken off, and as just as I sent it out, I felt a really nice pull. Oh boy, we're going this way, we're going this way. <laughs> Fish wants to go this way. What, this is weird. We'll find out what it is. We got ourselves, woo! Pull him in, just flip him, I guess. Yeah, we got ourselves a mutton snapper. That might be close to a keeper, but we're gonna find out right now. Sun setting, it's a full moon today, so this bike can be turning on right now. So let's get lines back out and measure this one, but this is what we're looking for. If you guys watch the channel, you know I love to catch these bad boys. On the zero. That is a keeper, pretty sweet. Love having that accurate cooler on my 40 quart grizzly cooler. Small juvenile mutton, but you know what? He is a keeper, not complaining. So first fish in the boat, let's get lines right back out, see what else we can get real quick. For the sunsets, and if you watch my videos, you know I just slayed a giant mutton snapper in one of my latest videos. So check that out if you haven't seen it. I cry and everything, so don't make fun of me. All right, yeah, using a, a five-aught mustad circle hook, wide gap, and I just use my bubble blade pliers, but we just tied a muting knot on there, 40-pound fluorocarbon leader. Let's get bait. These pinfish hurt so much. They have so many little spikes. All of those things on the dorsal fin are spikes, including on the back side. That's why they're called pinfish, I guess. Uh, but they have no teeth, but you get poked by these things all day long. I have so many holes in my hands, but here we go. As you can see, little pinfish going out. And as you can see how I rigged it, but right through the lips. That way it doesn't get double hooked back into the fish. And I want to hook the actual fish that's eating this guy. So we're going to cast it out. Hooked up again. Can't seem to keep a line in the water. This is crazy. I need help. Oh, that's a mangrove, oh my god, it's a, it's a cobera. Oh, it's cobera, flip him in. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my gosh, that's a huge mangrove snapper. That's the biggest mangrove snapper I've ever caught on my boat. Now I'm freaking out. Holy goodness gracious, that's crazy. Dude, that thing is an ocean mangrove snapper. You guys, I hope you're watching my Florida Keys videos here because we caught some big ones the other day, but this guy is huge. I'm pretty sure he's a mangrove. I don't believe that's a Kubera. Yeah, he's got the big stripes. Yeah, he's a freaking giant mangrove snapper. Look at that beauty. Wow, that is a mangrove snapper. Heck yeah, that is so sweet. The biggest one I've caught in a while. But like I said, you guys need to be watching my Florida Keys videos because we are slaying it down here. Let's get a quick measure on them on the Grizzly Cooler. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Full moon bite is on. And these guys spawn this time of the year as well. He's about the same size as that mutton snapper. That's crazy. Beautiful fish.
Back at the house, guys. Really awesome day on the water. Really can't complain, we got dinner. But I'm super excited to go in and make our fish sauce. We haven't made it in quite a while. But I'm just gonna get right to filleting this keeper mutton snapper. Also, one of our top five favorite fish to eat, for sure. And I have plenty of how-to fillet videos, guys. So if you're interested in how to actually do this step-by-step, step, you can check out those videos on my channel. But I'm just making my cut. I'm actually, today I'm using my seven inch tapered flex from Bubba Knives. Love this knife. This is actually my favorite go-to. And then I'll use their nine inch tapered flex for bigger fish. But this, since this guy's a little on the smaller side, the seven inch is perfect. Oh man, that meat looks so good already. Can't wait. We're almost done with this side. And I always say this, but a sharp knife is key to success here. There we go. Beautiful filet. Let's skin it real quick. Get it out of this hot sun. Just at a 45 degree angle. So using the same knife, but you can use what works for you, of course. And I like a tape, I really like a flexible knife to really bend it and get it in there. Get the pin bones out. Oh, and here comes a little friend, a little kitty cat that wants to eat. No, it's not for you, buddy. Not for you. <laughs> and it's going into my five gallon bucket right here. It's actually salt water and ice. And stop rubbing up on me. It's some random cat in the neighborhood. But every time I fillet fish the last couple weeks, he comes out. It's pretty funny. He's like, appears out of nowhere. I don't even know the cat's name, but he's got no tail. Uh, anyhow, but we uh, put it in the salt water there because if you rinse off your fillet in fresh water, something happens to it where it's called like osmosis and it causes the cells of the meat to expand and it actually like takes the flavor away and makes it not taste as good and fr as fresh as you would hope for. So just a tip in the future, try to use salt water and you can also make your own. And um, as far as how much salt to use and all that good stuff, just look it up on Google. Google's your friend, guys. Um, anyhow, so we're just going to go ahead and get this other side off real quick. And then we're going to take them right upstairs and make an awesome sauce. And we love to use this sauce for everything from grouper to snapper. Um, to dolphin, mahi-mahi, uh, everything. Everything is great with this sauce and we actually got it from a friend of ours. So it's pretty cool to share it with you guys today. And we are going to also leave the recipe down in the comments below for y'all. We're done with one fish there. You can kind of see through his body. It means I did a good job. And I'm gonna go ahead and fillet up the couple more yellowtail and a mangrove snapper in the grizzly cooler. And then I'll meet you all inside for the cooking section of this video. All right, guys, let's come to your favorite segment, cooking with pud. Woohoo! Woohoo! It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I got this uh, recipe from a friend of ours, Dave Hickson. Thanks, Big Dave. Shout out. And uh, we're gonna put the recipe down in the uh, comments below, in the description below the video. But I just wing it, all right? Um, I'm not wing it, but I, I've done it so many times. Right. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, the tricks and trades of it, and uh, let's get right to it right now. So the sauce is a butter and cream sauce. We use heavy cream, okay? So I'm gonna just, I don't really measure the ingredients. I just put them in, ingredients? I don't know, ingredients, I just put them in. But basically, uh, depending on how much sauce you wanna make, you're gonna use equal parts of heavy cream and butter. So if you want two cups of sauce, that's one cup each, all right? But let's get started. The first thing I did was, I'm heating up some olive oil in the pan here, all right? And then I've already pre-chopped with my beautiful bowl blade knife, some onion and garlic. Of course, put in as much onion and garlic as you want, all right? We love a lot of garlic. So first, I'm just gonna cook this. I'm gonna uh, just brown this onion for like three or four minutes. It's been about four or five minutes. I'm gonna add the garlic. Now I'm gonna let that cook for about another four minutes and let that garlic simmer and, and get nice and soft. Ready for the next step, Darcy? Show them this real quick. Now you can see that this is pretty much uh, all simmered up pretty good, sauteed up. So now we're gonna add some wine. And we are not wine connoisseurs, we just add almost any kind of wine. What is this? Sutter Home, Pinot something or other. You know, whatever wine you like. So, uh, and this is, again, by taste, how much wine you want. It's a good amount. And so now with this wine, what you're gonna do is you're gonna reduce this 50%. So take a look at it. Darcy, you take a look at it too, and then when it gets down 50%, then we can both confirm. <laughs> so there we go. Let me tell you, show you what we're doing with the vegetables, all right? 
We've already put some vegetables here in the uh, in the oven. I don't, not even my own house. I don't have the pot the pot things. But here they are. We're just baking them. This is asparagus, and it's just olive oil and salt and pepper. Okay, and then you cook that to how you like it. I don't like it cooked that much. Darcy likes it real cooked. Bibbidi boop. It's about 10 to 15 minutes later, and it looks like we're down about 50 percent. Darcyzzle says it's okay. So now I'm gonna add that cream and butter like you said. Again, I'm gonna do a cup of each. A cup of cream. And a cup of butter. Oh! Cooking with pudding. That's what happens, that's what happens. Now at this time also, a peanut or sizzle. You can also put in, if you, really, if you like, you can put in uh, Tomato, those tomatoes, what are those called, Dark Sizzle? Sun-dried tomatoes, yeah. right. Now you can also, I guess you, if you're not having it over asparagus, you can probably put little asparagus pieces in here. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, then I'm just gonna salt and pepper it to taste. I don't know what Dark Sizzle do with my salt and pepper. Ooh, thank you, my lovely assistant. Salt and pepper to taste, and also sugar to taste. I put some sugar in there and it makes it delicious. Oh, look at that, what magic. So there we go, and now, we're gonna let this uh, heat up and metal, butter's gonna melt. And I like to bring it to a boil twice, all right? So, and you gotta keep stirring it, otherwise, because it's obviously a milk sort of a product or cream, you don't wanna burn it. So bring it to a boil twice, that's what I do. And then it's gonna be delicious. Time to get that fish started. You can see I, kind of, I got this all mixed up a little bit. So this is almost on its way to its first boil. Now let me tell you about how I cook this fish. We're cooking that delicious mutton and some mangrove that Darcy caught, we caught, and she cleaned up before for you. And there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm just cooking it in, in butter right now, okay? That's one of my favorite ways to do it. But making the fish crunchy really makes it delicious, you know, with different texture with, with this sauce. Now, I'm a little, I'm fat. I'm overweight, obviously. Well, I lost a little, if some of you guys noticed, thank you. But, uh, so we're trying to keep it down. But if you want to dredge it in some uh, milk or eggs and then put breadcrumbs on it or just flour, it makes it nice and crispy and it's delicious with the sauce. Or you can even just cook it in oil instead of butter, turn up the heat a little bit, and make the edges crunchy, and that's really nice too. But I'm just doing it in butter here. And what I do is you'll see how it goes, but I put it in the pan. And then I wait for it to cook, maybe, maybe you know, three minutes or so. Fish cooks about 10 minutes per inch. And I wait till it gets white going in on the sides, and then I flip it. So right now, we got this mutton going, or is this the mangrove? I'm not sure, the mangrove was huge. It's mutton. That's mutton, all right, says Darcy. Oh, look over here. It says, oh, look. See, this is boiling a little bit already. So we want to keep that stirring. So this is well on its way. All right, now you can see the sauce. Right down here, Darcy. It's boiling like crazy. Put up like a fifth time now. I'm going to take that off. And that is going to cool down, and it's going to thicken up real nice right there. All right, so we're going to leave that. Now come look at the fish, Darcy. Like I told you, you see this white? You see this white all around the meat? So I mean, it's you know getting done. That's when I'm going to flip it. All right, guys. Now here's how you test if it's yeah, done. No. Oh, I almost started the fire. All right, here's how you test if it's done. You just stick a. Obviously, you can cut it in half and check it. But I, you can also stick a fork in it, and if it goes through nice and easy. And you don't feel any flesh in there, then it's done, okay? These thicker pieces are gonna need maybe a little bit more time, and that's right. So I'm gonna take these little pieces off, cook these big pieces for another couple minutes or a minute or less, and then we'll cook the mangrove, and then we're gonna put it all together with the asparagus like Darcy likes, and you're gonna see this delicious meal. Looks pretty good, Dar Sizzle. Yes, I usually devour this meal. Doesn't matter what kind of fish is on top, we cook all sorts of fish using this recipe. Uh, but I also pre-cut my asparagus. And High I level. like to like take a bite of the sauce and the fish and a little bit of asparagus like all at once. You don't have to do it that way. It's all going to one place. It's all personal preference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brian always does an amazing job with this recipe. I don't even mess with it because he, he has become such an expert cooker. Cooking with pudding. Cooking with pudding. I Thank you. 
Mwah. Look at that. That makes it all worth it, right, guys? All the work? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So good. The key is not to overcook that fish, dude. Cook it nice and little. All mm -hmm. right. So until next time, guys. What about you tasting it? It's delicious. I already know. I gotta get. The, I gotta get the. He eating. eats it as he's cooking. I, I love cooking. I just devour the whole thing. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will post the actual the how to cook it and how to make it down in the description below. And until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on catching. catching. All right, I gotta get over that mangrove. Oh my god. <laughs>